me for your uh, invitation. It's always quite exciting to uh, e-meet, you know, um, um, uh, people who are working in the same area. And uh, yeah, despite the pandemic, um, I'd like to uh, offer you a very brief view of what we are doing at Volvicon, what we've been doing in the very recent years in terms of innovation and what we are doing right now in terms of restoration and uh, cultural mediation. Um, so I'll go very quickly um, into the history of the place. We cannot talk about Volvicon without knowing who was at the, um, at the very beginning of this amazing story, Nicolas Fouquet, who was the superintendent of the finance under the young King Louis XIV. He decided to have, to fulfill a fantasy and an ambition to have the most beautiful house ever in France. In order to, uh, to fulfill his love for the art, he was definitely a very true lover of the art, uh, a collector, but also um, his ambition. He was very ambitious. He, was, he wanted to be uh, the the, the, as close as possible to the king. And by showing his wealth, his taste, his influence, he would then uh, perhaps reach his goal. And that's what he did by imagining and then constructing the Chateau de Vaux-Vicomte. He uh, surrounded himself by the three best artists of his time. Louis Levaux, the architect, there's no known portrait of him. Um, André Le Nôtre, the famous landscape designer, and Charles Lebrun, the painter, decorator. And he gave them what any artist would dream of. First, a blank canvas of 1,200 acres. Second, a lot of money, uh, because he was already rich. You know, he got married strategically twice. And when I say strategically, it means like there was a big comfortable endowment. Um, and he also pursued the, um, uh, the business of his father, who was... Uh, who had organized some link uh, with boats uh, between uh, Brittany and the Antilles, the island. So, so he was a wealthy man, but he then climbed the ladder of his profession very quickly. He's a very intelligent, witty, charming person. And uh, finally uh, had these three artists and in less than 10 years uh, built Volvicomte. Um, the day of the famous party of inauguration, 17 of August, 1661, it was already three months that the destiny of the poor Nicolas Fouquet was sealed. Um, you have to know that a man called Jean-Baptiste Colbert was very jealous of the successful and flamboyant Fouquet. Both of them wanted to become the next prime minister. Definitely, um, Fouquet was in advance, and Colbert just convinced the king that Fouquet was the bad guy. He was the bad guy because supposedly he was trying to raise an army to overthrow the king. He was stealing in the cashier of the kingdom. And Louis XIV ended up by being convinced by Colbert. And three months before this famous party, they put up a plot, decided the date of the arrest of Nicolas Fouquet that will happen three, barely three weeks after the, this party, um, uh, decided the, the, uh, to, to nominate the judges of the trial, etc. So everything was organized to get rid of a too ambition, ambitious and dangerous Nicolas Fouquet. What remains today is Volvicomte, this masterpiece of the 17th century, where the king was so amazed, as well as all the, all the court, by such a, a, a beautiful estate, but more than beautiful, innovative, and very bold and innovative for the time being. And, um, I, and, and we have at Volvicon for the first time, what we will call a French formal garden, which is not just a garden, but an architecture and a garden and a park and a decoration which has been thought and built together in relation with everything else. We have, so we have a central axis going north, uh, sorry, going, uh, where I am, here we go. We are going north to south along which everything is organized. Um, 
what we so this is just in a very in a nutshell the story of Nicolas Fouquet. Now Nicolas Fouquet is going to be sent into prison, where he's going to die after 19 years. So he barely enjoyed his estate. He had this fabulous party. He had the best artists around him, such as Molière, who wrote a play for him, La Fontaine, Pélisson, Madame de Sévigné. Um, and, uh, and then the king just understood exactly what he had to do, basically to do exactly what Fouquet had done. So the king took the same artist and built Versailles in order to use, as Fouquet did, the arts to show how powerful the king was. And that was then communicating to all of Europe. Um, so Versailles was definitely a propaganda, to a tool of propaganda for Louis XIV and for the absolutism of Louis XIV. Um, so what we try to do now is, of course, to uh, transmit, to share this story, the stories of Olivier Vicomte, the heritage, um, to the maximum number of people, uh, but more, more than numbers in a way where we would respect the place and respect the spirit of the place. Um, so I was, um, so for example, a lot of companies, small companies, startups came to us to try to send, to sell us some apps on one's phone, tablet, whatever. And after one, a few weeks or a few months, we thought with my brothers, well, this is definitely not what we want to have, you know. This is a house. This is an inhabited house for three centuries and a half. And we don't want to see people just looking at their screen. And we really think, despite what they were all trying to convince us with, that with a screen, with a tool in your hands, it's an obstacle between the collection, the decor, and the visitor. So what we aim for is was the sound, and we build up this um, uh, we build up this this project, which is which that we call the immersive sound journey. We invited some uh, comedians and some of them from the Comédie Française to read to record the story of Nicolas Fouquet. Um, by playing the role of the main characters. So basically we had some comedians that were playing La Fontaine, Colbert, the other ones, the king, Fouquet, his wife, etc., in the actual room of the chateau. So when the visitor is entering a room with his headphones, it triggered automatically the story that has been re uh, recorded in the room. And then room after another, the, the, the guest is completely immersed into the story of Nicolas Fouquet with a three-dimensional or binaural sound. So it's an absolutely extraordinary sound where you can hear the, someone whispering on your right and you will turn your, your head being convinced that someone is whispering at your ear on your right or um, the crackling of the fire or a window that is you know, being open discreetly, every sound you listen. So it's really like a film that the visitor has to imagine thanks to the sound. So he has, so he's got his free hands, he's got, he's completely free and he just go with the flow of the visit. And I mean, with the flow of the, of the story that has, that is, that is told to him through the headphones. So we're very happy with that. This is free to every visitor, there's two versions, one for kids and one for adults. I think the one for kids is better than the one for the adults because it's the second one we did and we learned from the first one. Um, uh, but we're very, very happy. And I think, you know, people are, this is the experience. You know, we talk a lot about experience in, 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 in our world and the uh, uh, immersive experience is definitely what we wanted to have and wanted to offer to our visitors. Completely another type of project, but extremely important. And it is basically the key of what we do at Volvicont is the restoration. The, what we call in our slang, les restaurations monuments historiques, which is the restoration that are key to the monument, to the collection, to the garden. And it can be a roof, it can be a painting, it can be a hydraulic system. It is part of the history of Volvicont. And for that, we have 
a little bit of subsidies. Basically, we have 6% of our budget, which are coming from uh, public subsidies. Um, then we have uh, 15 to 80% of a uh, restoration project that is funded by private funding, which is basically donors, private donors that are coming mainly from France and they are individuals as well as corporations. Um, and the other part are coming from the United States. Uh, so here we've been dreaming about this project of restoring the cupola and the Grand Salon in itself, which is the nevragic, nevragic part of the of the and room of the chateau um, we just began a few weeks ago there's 60 tons of scaffolding and on the uh, lower left picture you can see my brother here with the architect en chef des monuments historiques just under the cupola so they are at 18 meters so 60 feet high uh, from the ground thanks, thanks to the scaffolding and they are observing the, the sky that has been painted uh, in the 19th century. Um, it is, of course, extraordinary to be able to have this privilege to be able to touch almost all those sculptures that have been sculpted 350 years ago and to decide with the architects, with a scientific committee, with the artisan, what we are going to do. There are some, we just find out some layers of painting that could have been done during the, uh, the time of Fouquet uh, we, and that perhaps are, were, were tests of different colors uh, because it looks like the Grand Salon was not, was not finished because Nicolas Fouquet got arrested three weeks after the party. Uh, so anyway, it's very exciting. And this has been done mainly, mainly like 80% thanks to our private donors, which I whom I, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful and, and ever grateful. Um, the second stage of this project is going to be, this is, the, this is the drawing, well, the engraving actually, of what was the fresco to be painted on the cupola um, if Nicolas Fouquet uh, were not arrested. So Lebrun, the painter decorator, had this project he drew a few preparatory drawings that are at the Louvre Museum today, um, but no time to, uh, to, uh, to paint that fresco into the cupola. So we have the engraving, we have the Louvre have the, has the, 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 the drawings. What we are going to do is we're going to, pro to use those illustrations to project them onto the cupola with uh, monumental projectors, um, like a mapping video, if you know what I mean, uh, but we're going to do that onto the cupola. And this is a montage of the, the engraving onto the cupola. This is going to be done in 2022, as we're going to use the same um, process in 2021 to, to tell the story of the friendship between uh, Le Fouquet and his great friend, Jean de La Fontaine, that we are celebrating the 400th anniversary uh, this year. Um, that is another story which began very bad, very in a, which began as a drama. As you can see on the right, the, the picture on the right, there's this um, boxwood that has been attacked uh, between, it, it began in 2014, but it went dramatically fierce and catastrophic in 2018 with the moth. So the box blight first, which are fungus, and then a moth that transform into caterpillar that eat the, 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 the leaves and then even the wood of the boxwood. So these are the different stages of this caterpillar who can destroy a boxwood in one night. So in one night, you can have from one day to another, you can lose 100% of the leaves of a, a, a boxwood plant. And that can be done on hectares. This is quite well known all over Europe, from China to Europe, it came from China. It um, migrates all the way to the west coast of the Atlantic of Europe. 
And I know that in the United States, there are some uh, places that has been attacked by this uh, piral in French, we call them. What we had to do, um, and the scientific committee validated that sad option was to remove those boxwood, these embroidery boxwood parterre that are right in front of the house and that have been planted by my great grandfather in 1906. Um, it was one century that they were there. We are living in front of them every day. And uh, it, was, it was kind of sad to see those uh, machines to, uh, to get rid of those boxwood. But at the end of the day, it's a garden. And a garden is a, is a living monument, you know, and it evaluates, it dies, it re, it, there's a re rebirth, etc. So we were just trying to be enthusiastic as possible for the next step. And we scratch our head and thought, what are we going to present to uh, the visitors in, that was, that was in January uh, 2019, and we were opening in March. But, you know, the garden, we would allow ourselves to be still working on a new project until June. But in June, it must have been inaugurated. So we thought about putting up a call for proposal among artists, designers, uh, landscape designers, uh, in order for them to design an ephemeral project, because we wanted to have a project for five years and not more, in order to give the scientific community to find some solution for the boxwood. So to give them time, and during that time, we would have a project. So this is the project that uh, win won the competition. Um, it is by a French artist called Patrick Courcade. And what we liked about it and what the visitors liked about it is that what we heard, what we hear constantly is, is, which I think is the best compliment we can have is, it looks like it's been there forever. And that's exactly what we wanted. It's uh, the, 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 the brief was very short. You know, we were saying, Basically, you are in the garden of Le Nôtre. Um, you are surrounded by some features. Please do create a project that integrates perfectly with the rest of the garden. It is, in some ways, the contrary of what sometimes the contemporary art is showing is in your face, or it can be, um, how do you call it in French? In, uh, in, um, it can be controversial. We didn't want anything like that. We just wanted the country. Everyone, I mean, it had to be almost natural. So these ephemeral ribbons are going to be there another three years, and we are still very happy with that. Last project, um, the, 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 the fountains. We have uh, fountains all over the estate. Um, and those fountains are fed by a hydraulic system who have been invented by André Le Nôtre in the 17th century. It has been, of course, restored in the 19th century, but it's still working on the same. Um, on the same, so I'm, I have some close-up of this uh, of this scheme. But basically, you have the chateau on the right, you have the Farnese Hercules on the left, and you have all the hydraulic system with two reservoirs on the two highest points of the estate. Today, when you open those reservoirs, it feeds the fountain for six hours. At the end of the six hours, there's no more water. And we have to wait between five and 10 days, depending on the weather, the rain, um, the spring. There are some wide spring everywhere to feed again and to fill up the reservoir. So what we want is to open the fountains every day. For the moment, we have them open twice a month because of the limitation in water supply. We want to have them every day. So we want to build electricity all the way to the left side. So basically I have here this, two, this, this same scheme, but in two parts, but we want to bring the water on the top scheme next to the, the reservoir thanks to the Grand Canal, I mean, next to the Grand Canal. And the Grand Canal, which is Canal de la Poile, here we would put a pump, electric pump, to feed water into the reservoir on the left. 
thanks to that, we would have water in order to have the fountains every day when we are open and even during our candidate evening. That would make such a difference in the garden. That would just make, add so much life to the garden. And it's again, it's the audacity of the Grand Siecle of the 17th century, of those artists that were bold enough to invent such a masterpiece that we want to continue and to be as close as possible as if it was in the 17th century. This is almost uh, more than 16 minutes. So this is basically the last, um, yeah, the, the, the last project. Well, this is a big project that we just began. We're going to uh, work on it and raise money for, for it. But this is the very uh, uh, sheer excitement that we have and privilege to have uh, to, um, to decide for the future of Eau de Comte. Thank you very much.